this is your daily briefing you're most welcome to it what um, i am so despondent um there is good news the good news is that we've had a manager candidly and professionally and, res and quite respectfully in, so in a quite sort of self-deprecating manner very simply and very ably call out daniel levy and call out enoch for what they are and i go back to what i said a couple of weeks ago levy doesn't know what he's doing um, I read a comment from um, somebody online earlier and um, it pointed out, this guy pointed out, that nine of Poch's squad are still haunting Hotspur Way. Nine team members. And this is the definition, the absolute definition of serial loser. When Klopp took over at Liverpool, did Fenway Sports tell him to reinvigorate Joe Allen? No. No, he was, he was there for less than a season, and he's now at Stoke. But this is, this, is, this is what we're up against. And, uh, you know, everything I've said, and I, I take no pleasure from this, and I'm not, you know, dancing on a... But everything I've said in these, in these films with you has been accurate. And so when we beat City, clearly Conte was delighted, but we've beaten City many, many times now. In, uh, truth be told and the, the 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 cycle is that we then go afterwards so yeah i was happy but i didn't think top four was realistic i didn't think we were going to particularly had a chance of winning anything it just struck me as a good game three points so you know so what let's let's all say it together so what um so the like i said differences fenway sports for example know what they're doing and um, I had a guest blog from one of you guys um, sent it in um, la again last week um, and saying that, that Levy has, has done the worst thing you can do in business, which is to take your eye off the main thing. So it was difficult, it was difficult to work out what was worse about last night, watching the game, which was just abject, you know, nothing spectacularly stupid to report in terms of individual errors or anything crazy like that. There were some duff performances, but it was just abject. It was just poor. But then we had the press conference afterwards, which I'm grateful for. But the whole thing was like going to a loved one's funeral and you're not in a great, you know, not in a great humour at all. And, and then they drop the casket as they're getting out of the hearse. You know, it's insult to injury. And this is the cycle, and this is the nature. This is how Enoch exhibits itself. It's just, it's, it's just in, extremely depressing. When a man tells you he's not content to just draw his wages, then he needs more, that he's deeply uncomfortable losing four out of five games, and that despite working hard, he cannot alter outcomes, then Houston, we have a problem. Conte has now been hit square in the face with the same metaphorical bucket of ice-cold reality water that first began dousing Tottenham managers back in 2019 when Maurizio Pochettino told the press that a painful rebuild was required, and it never happened. I take a view that it would take an almost unimaginable set of extraordinary circumstances to convince the Italian to stay. You're dealing with a guy who doesn't want the money. You're dealing with a guy who wants something that's workable. And this isn't working. A brief mention in dispatches, because I can't let you go. Those that wanted Pochettino to return, those that called Mourinho every name under the sun, to those that mumbled about giving Nuno more time, you were all horribly, horribly wrong, and you do not understand football. So where do we go? You, you tell me, Answer, answers in the comment section, because I, I, could, I, I, get, I get sent stuff all the time and I got sent a promotional thing by a betting company who I won't name because they haven't paid me and it was an interview with Sam Allardyce and it was basically Sam's greatest hits over the years and there was a thing at the bottom and I did a blog post around it because it kind of made sense I could see it there was a little light bulb went on in my head and I could see it not being that ridiculous and he said that he didn't want to um, work in China or you know on the moon or wherever because he had a family who settled blah, blah blah and the amount of time he'd have to devote to it and what he was saying was never say never but if the right offer came along and it just occurred to me that after Conte what would you do where do you go 
because you've run out, you, you've, you've totally busted. You are a busted flush. You cannot say, oh yes, yes, well, well, well I'm not extravagant in the strategy. The way. No, 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 no. Everything has fallen to pieces. Everything has fallen apart. The whole thing was built on quicksand. So you keep banging on about this bloody stadium that nobody wants to sponsor. You keep on banging on about these bloody world-class facilities, which incidentally don't prevent people from getting injured, don't make footballers into better footballers. But Sam Allardyce, Sam Allardyce to Tottenham is looking more and more like a reality every waking minute. And that says more about a club than any nasty words you could put together. Yeah, he's a competent manager, very good manager, probably a better manager than I am, or most of you watching this. But when your club, when your club hires Sam Allardyce, you know, it's like having Tony Pulis come in. Conte set out his stories, made his position abundantly clear, um, and even the, the, the most daft fan has, has hopefully got the message by now. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I honestly feel that this team, this squad, needs smashing up and separating. I don't know what to tell you, but I tell you the words of Milton have been resonating with me recently. Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to the light. That's where we are. Thank you, Daniel. You've done a really splendid job. So, despite them, keep it on them.